Yeah, yeah, but he was still just doing underwear ads, trying to break into the biz. Now he's conservative. Packed his bags and left California. Race car spelled backwards is still race car. This is the race car spelled backwards podcast. Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Brad, and with me, as always, is Jamie, and this is Race Car Spell Backwards, episode 72. Jamie, how the heck are you doing, bud? Doing good, but, you know, I got a co-host that's real anal about some weird stuff. Really? Yeah, you believe that crap? What's he anal about? You're referring to me. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) not the other host. Are you you talking about me, Sunshine? Not that host on... Fox. <laughs> All right, so before we start recording, I tell Jamie to move his phone because it's in the Here, camera screen. This phone that's now on the camera screen will drive Brad completely insane. If it was sitting where he left it at, it would have just the edge of it would have shown on the left hand side of the screen. And it, yes, it would have driven me crazy. And then Brad was running around like a squirrel that lost his nuts. But then I found my nuts, and you moved the you moved the phone. Well, yeah, that's how you found the nuts. <laughs> they were hidden under the phone. <laughs> yeah. And then we had to argue about the water bottle. Like I don't care. You don't care water about a water bottle. Is in the cameras, but you drink the water on the show, so the bottle's in the screen at some point anyway. The phone, we don't touch our phones during the recording of the show. Just is what it is. I I just did. Well, well, yeah, now, because you're making a point. I just touched it again. Yeah, you're just doing it to mess with me. See? It's going to touch you. You've been touched by the phone, Brad. Just take, Don't come unglued. Just take your toe. <laughs> take your toe, you. Take your toe, you. And move on. <laughs> Ain't nobody got no time for all that. Ain't got no time for this nonsense. What's up, man? What'd you do? Have a good weekend? You know, I actually worked outside Saturday morning. And that did it for me. That was it. What'd you do Sunday? I uh, stayed in the house because it was hot watch, and humid. Watch the race. I watched the race. Yeah, I didn't really do a whole lot Sunday. Laid around working on the show all day, pretty much. Trying to get ready. We are recording a little on the early side today. It is my wedding anniversary, mine and my wife's wedding anniversary. 19 years we've been married. So It's really weird that you got married on a Monday. I know, it's like we would have thought about it when we were getting married. Like, you know, Monday, we're probably going to have a podcast. Yeah, Monday? We should have been thinking in a head, like way ahead, like 19 I'm sure you could get a church, though. We got married. It's pretty easy to get a Monday church. It was a Saturday. Oh. It's it's with the way the earth moves around the sun and the calendar system works with seven days, not even. You mean that Caesarean? Count to 24. The Caesarean calendar? No, the Mayan. Mayan calendar? Yeah, we're, we're, we, no, that expired. Yeah, but we renewed it. Oh, okay. It's a subscri- as long as you renewed it. We do it on a, I do it on an annual subscription. Did you pay your taxes on I, it? I saved $7 a month by using the annual subscription. Well, everything's a subscription now. It comes with Flow Racing, actually. I heard that they're going to, uh, with electric cars, since they can't charge a federal gas tax. You can charge They're going to start tax. charging use tax on the road. So you're... Um, I think he's falling off there. My thing is falling off? Oh, my goodness. It's falling off. Your clip-on is clip-oning off. I made children with my thingy. <laughs> now it's there we go. Off. Save the thingy. Lack of use. Saved. It's just a, they call me stump. We saved the thingy. I'm stump. Stumpy? Stumpy. So last week's show, we, we dedicated to um, Janet and Eric. This week, we're going to give a shout-out to our buddy Russell from Black Bayou Designs. We greatly appreciate you listening, ma'am. I'm assuming he probably listens while he's making furniture and cabinets, since that's kind of what he does. Well, yeah, I, I listen to us while we while work. You, while you make stuff. It's just annoying hearing my own voice. So what we're doing is we have, what, 28 shows left till we hit 100 episodes. So every week we're going to dedicate the show to a different list. How many shows till we hit a million subscribers on YouTube? 11. 11 more? 1100. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't do a whole lot of YouTube Oof. last week. Kind of took a break, actually. It's kind of nice. Getting ready for Labor Day? Yeah. <laughs> whenever so you didn't might, labor? Whenever that day mm-hmm. might be. <laughs> That's on a Monday, too. As we discussed. Surprised you didn't get married on a Labor Day. As we discussed, we don't know when Labor Day is. 
Um, I think it's coming up. Two or three weeks from today? It's coming up. Three Mondays from today. Something two like weeks. That. The weekend after Daytona? I'm thinking, yeah, two weeks. We'll have to check that out. Maybe it's three weeks. No, I'm thinking three now. You know, labor is kind of communist, socialist. What is it? Don't you celebrate labor unions? And since we're not a member of a union, do we have anything to celebrate? Yeah, so I that, guess we can cook hot dogs and hamburgers. Yeah, shoot fireworks. Labor Day is a good excuse to blow stuff up. You don't work on Labor Day. Wouldn't you work on Labor Day to celebrate labor? Or you would have a baby. It's It sounds like something some communist came up with in Russia. It's probably a holiday made up by the firework manufacturers to sell more fireworks. I don't think they've really impacted Labor Day. That's not a big Labor Day firework thing. I think it's thing. just an excuse to have a day off of work federally. Man, they get like one day a week off of work federally, and our taxes pay and for their days off. They don't work when they're at work. So. I know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Well, anyway, after 100 episodes, we are not going to quit. We'll keep going. Oh, I think I think I there was, that was an expiration. <laughs> <laughs> well, so there was some confusion. I had somebody reach out and ask me about that. They're like, "Look, I think it's cool that you're dedicating a show a week to a fan, to a listener, or whatever." What if you run out of fans? What? They didn't say that. No. Oh, they, they were generous. They, yeah, they were like, <laughs> thinking it was really cool. But call they, me out. They thought they were quitting. They're like, "So after a hundred, you, you're done. It's your end date." I'm like, "No, no, 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 no. We're we'll keep going." Under is just a big deal. It's one and two knots. Like, I think this is episode 72. I think 75 is a big deal. Yeah. And then 100. And then after 100, what, 150? I don't know. You kind of need to or go to 250 two, then, is right? It, or 200. Or do we just want to celebrate constantly? I mean. You know, I'm not big into cake. Can we celebrate without cake? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. Maybe on 100, we'll make a donut cake. A trail mix. A pancake. A little Debbie. A pancake. Donut. A volcano. Little, a little Debbie. With a sprinkler on top. Pancake cake. I think we pancake can come up with cake. little Debbie's, the chocolate little Debbie's and pancakes and make a cake out of it. Just a stack of pancakes with little Debbie donuts around it. Hey, I like give a you a swirl. You'd be the poster child for one of the <laughs> evening news diabetes. advertisements. Yeah, diabetes. <laughs> I'd, I'd have a medication named after me. <laughs> the Brad. All right, so let's jump into some stories. Let's tell some stories. Some star stories. Hey, I realize that we're an opinion-based podcast. Are we? Yeah, we're not facts, so we have to be opinion. <laughs> well, we, we have some facts occasionally. Sometimes. Most car of, facts. Most, of, <laughs> most <laughs> of our opinions are based on facts. Well, at least our facts. Yeah. That, our truth. Isn't that how they do that's, it in Hollywood what, now? That's what matters. Our truth. It's our truth. And our, and our, and our truth. truth can be any truth we have. Most of these stories that we read come offline. So there's a slight chance. On the internet? There's a slight chance there's a little bit of truth to every one of them. Or a whole lot. That's my thing. That's my thing. The, far, the more whacked out the story is, the more believable it is, honestly. Like, where well, we do live in a world of extremes now. Why not? Extremes and stupid dreams. Do you think that's why Twitter's now X for extreme? Extreme tweeting. I've seen people calling it X now, and it doesn't sound right. Like we, we post it on X. Yeah. I'm still, I'm just going to stay. I mean, our buddy Brandon listens to the show. He, he agreed. He's going to stay OG Twitter as well. I mean, X sounds so empty. I mean, I you can tweet on X. I'm just not getting rid of Twitter or tweeting. I mean, right? I'm Gen X and I'm not for the X. Just see, X has been overdone for see the my big, generation. The big lit up X he put on um, the Twitter building downtown. Then they got mad and he had yeah. to pull it down because he yeah. didn't get a permit. It's, only he wouldn't get a permit. Like, come on, man. I think he wanted the publicity, man, for not having one. X. Oh, it was all publicity. I mean, look at all the publicity he got when he put it up. It didn't. It, everybody was talking about how bright it was, and everybody had an opinion on it. So that's all f free publicity to get ready to launch the brand X. I mean, you're trying to get the new name of Twitter out there as X. 
What's the clone? What better way to do it than the publicity he got from doing the, the big giant? What's the Facebook clone of Twitter now? What's it called? I don't remember. Trends. Trends. No, that's not right. T instead of X. <laughs> Spill the T. I don't. I was on it for like three days and I quit using it. Threads maybe. Threads. Yeah, let's go with that. He already owns Instagrams. Why didn't he call it Grams? Well, <laughs> and he smokes a lot of weed. Just stick with Grams. Yeah, just you have Instagram and then you have Grams. Yeah. I don't know why they didn't do that. Just call it Gram Bag. Or Dime Bag. Yeah. You could have named it after the great Dime Bag Daryl. I mean, I saw him on an interview where he smokes weed daily. Call it the weed. The weed. <laughs> little, little weed. Little weed. All right, so a man in Texas who was robbed at an ATM returns later, later that night sees the robber still hanging around the ATM, runs him over, and gets his money back. Hmm. So this dude in Texas, he gets robbed at the ATM, right? He goes to the police department, fills out his report, does all the paperwork, and he's driving back home. On the way back home, he passes that same ATM he was robbed at, sees the guy who robbed him hanging around, and runs him over. So it, it says that he ran him over, pinning his legs under the car, he gets out, digs through the guy's pockets, gets his money back and his ID back. I, I think he did a good job. Obviously, the cops weren't smart enough to go see if the guy's still hanging this around. Is, this is the most Texas thing I've ever heard of. These Was this in Uvalde where they wouldn't even defend the lives of children? No. The same cops? No. Nah. It was like oh, it was a, it was in. There's the town. no reason to go to that ATM. The robbery already took place. I mean, I, I take all the town names out of these, and I just give you the state. You can find it if you want to find it. Really, it. kind of explains the ineptitude of the police department in this little town. Honestly, the guy, the robbers, like you didn't get shot. I mean, everybody well, in Texas carries a gun. He felt like the cops weren't going to do anything to him. He's still hanging around the ATM. I got another story of Texas, and then we'll jump. Then we'll come back to the Michigan story. So, police in Texas said a man killed another man who allegedly stole his truck after tracking the thief down using an Apple AirTag. That works for me. Why not? Police said they received the report of a stolen vehicle around 1 p.m. The truck's owner used the Apple AirTag that he had left in the truck to track the vehicle nearly 80 miles from where it was stolen. When he found the man, they got into a shootout with each other, killing the man who stole the truck. Sounds like self-defense to me. <laughs> hey, you know, I think this is premeditated. <laughs> you had 80 miles to think about it. Now, granted, dude stole my truck. Did he not tell the police he air tagged it? I, it didn't say. Now, the police are reporting this. I'm thinking... Because he was shot a little after 1 p.m. when the truck was... I'm thinking he reported the truck being stolen while following the dude. So here's my take on he it. He didn't wait on the police to get there. He just broke out his 45 and just started blasting away. The state of Texas ought to give the owner of the truck that shot the thief... Commission? ...a reward because of the money he's saving the prison system and the court system. And he did the police's job for them. Yeah, all the police had to do was paperwork. All he, is, he was obviously a bad shot, though. No, I mean, he killed it. The thief was the bad shot. Well, so really, if you think about it, the thief died, right? Mm -hmm. The owner of the truck now has two vehicles he owns with bullet holes on them. I don't think you could trust the guy that stole it, though. <laughs> well, I mean, he's I mean, shooting at the guy that stole it, so he, probably, he at least shot out the driver's side window, the front window probably, got holes in the side of the car, and the vehicle he drove to chase the guy who stole oh, his car down. I was thinking they got so now out. The owner has both cars. No, it said there was bullet holes in both cars. Oh, I was thinking maybe they did a duel out in the street. No, they didn't like reach for the sky. Pow, 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 pow. Double gun that thing. <laughs> no, it's more like you got the lean going on, lean back driving. Pow, pow, pow. Oh, you followed him in his Chrysler 300? No, no, I think it was in a Mini Cooper. No, <laughs> Mini Cooper. This is Texas. It was probably an F-350, and he was or following his F-250. They call Suburban subcompacts there in Texas. Yeah, yeah. 
You got to have the big Suburban, not the little one. The Tahoe. The XLT, yeah. All right, so police in Michigan go undercover as drug dealers and end up busting another undercover cop who went undercover as a drug buyer. I'm hoping it was two different police departments. Yeah, so it was two different cities, and it was honestly, it was a freak mistake. It was a freak accident. The buyer was actually with one of his contacts who was on, was like a CI, I guess, and he was working undercover with him, and as they're passing through this city, they hear of an opportunity to make a good buy, so they ended up stopping, and the cops busted him, and turns out they busted another cop, so... Well, that's that's about par for the course. It's Michigan. Yeah, it's Michigan. It's its own place. It's kind of like uh, very, very near Detroit, California North. Yeah. They're almost to that point. Yeah, it'd be like the white, like the snowy part of California. Yeah, because Michigan, the Midwest part of California. I don't know if it's really white there because it's like more like gray, with all, all the smog and stuff mixes with the industrial snow. waste and all that fun stuff. Well, it turns the snow like a gray color, right? You lived there, didn't you? I lived there. Yeah. So Back in the... Wasn't the snow like a grayish color? 80s. Early 80s. Yeah. They built where I live. They had uh, they built uh, Osmobiles. And Fisher Body was there. Do you know any undercover cops? Um, I know some cops. I don't know if they're undercover. I go to church with a few. I know an ATF agent. I would think... He will, he will take your Second Amendment rights in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, you know, whenever someone talks guns around them, I say, you know, um, I lost all my guns. <laughs> they they got accidentally thrown into the last SpaceX launch. You know what happened with mine? My cat. I was, trying, them. I was trying to teach my cat about gun safety. Like, we learned, me and Jamie actually learned on this show that you should buy this book that teaches your cat about gun safety. Yeah, so, Thea learned it, my cat. Well, I was trying to teach my cat about it, and... It wasn't going so well, so I had to get rid of the guns and the cat. I no I, longer have a cat. Never. I would get rid of a cat that doesn't believe in my Second Amendment rights. I mean, if you're either going to learn gun safety as a cat or you're not, and if you're not, you, you can't, can't have her going wild in your house. You can't. Just you can't stay here. Lose their anger, shoot up the family. I mean, it could be bad. But good thing she took your guns because when they come to get them, they're already gone. Exactly. So I have nothing to give now. Well, that's what happened when Elon took mine and threw him on the last SpaceX flight. Yeah, I mean... They're all gone. Well, we're we're gathering rocks in my yard. Me and the kids are. For self-defense? Yeah, we're going to use rock slingshots. We've got a few old school. Boing. Well, you know, you won't have to pick up any brass. Exactly. That's, yeah. Rocks are readily available in the southeast. And I don't think they can do... Uh, Granite. I don't think the police can test the rock. Probably not. And I think... See if it was yours, except for fingerprints. Well, like David and Goliath, you know? I'm it thinking. worked. Yeah. Um, you know... Just, you but know. that was the original NRA, the National Rock Association. <laughs> <laughs> that was back there with the... Uh, back with the Goliath thing. The old school. Yeah, they wanted to ban... Rocks? <laughs> well, not rocks, just slingshots. Slingshots. But like that's an old like that's an old school slingshot. The Israelis too. came up with their constitution, and they they the National Rock Association yeah. defended the rights of the public in Israel to have rocks. Well, that's good. And slingshots. They got what's a, the point? They got having, a, they got a lot of rocks too. Over they in the do. Desert. I mean, he even even old trouble. Satan asked Jesus to turn a rock into a loaf of bread. And that's because he was worried about Jesus hitting him with that rock. It was a big rock. He's was, like, well, that's a loaf size there. You ain't going to hurt me with a loaf of bread, but that rock's going to hurt. So can you please turn this into a loaf of bread? <laughs> Jesus said no. Yeah. Don't take, my, rock hurts don't take my rights away. Like, you know what they used to say back in the old school Testament days? You never bring a loaf of bread to a rock fight. Well, and they used to stone it, people too. Exactly. So yeah. you know. You don't, don't, bring, bring, don't bring a loaf of bread to a rock fight even one of them heavy wheat breads that are like heavy as crap and you need water to eat because like it's sourdough the one of them hippie homemade breads the hippie bread yeah we watched that jesus revolution this weekend you seen that is that the new cw show or is that the one on netflix netflix <laughs> i i saw it i did not want oh where he goes to some church in california yeah oh no frisbee. i want to see it frisbee dude what was his first name I just watched it. Wow. His last name's Frisbee, though. 
I wanted to watch it. It's a good one. You need to watch it. Watch it, and then we'll talk about it on the show. We won't even talk about it today because you haven't watched it. No, but back to the Michigan undercover cops busting another set of undercover cops. I honestly figured this would happen more often. You would think. I mean, you think about New York City, how many different precincts they have, right? Or like, just priests selling dope. The priests sell. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a problem with the Catholic priests? Uh, every time I go there, that's who I get my... The priest is slinging the dope to me. <laughs> so you get your dope from? Yeah, he's like, hey, you want some drugs? And I'm like, priests don't do drugs, dude. And he said, well, this is New York City. This is a New York City priest. So, it like... be a Catholic thing. I'm well, not Catholic, so I The Franciscan I monks there are now opening dispensaries since it's legal in New York. That's what the priest told me. You see, they're getting ready to vote in North Carolina to see if the Native Americans can sell cannabis on the reservations i like thought the do. reservations were their own country wait well, i think they're i think they try to work we're gonna take the land from the indians again <laughs> no oh my we just goodness. tell them what they can and can't do on it no i think what they're they try to work hand in hand with the state like they don't just go all rogue but i mean do they have to get permission to do the casinos no i don't know i'm sure they work hand in hand with the city because they need the city to support the casinos and the cannabis. And what state is this? North Carolina. It sounds kind of dumb. It does. Just federal, I mean, they need to just federally legalize it and let's move on. I mean, really? Even I might get in politics. Politics. No, yeah, we're not allowed joke. to talk politics on the show anymore. Yeah, forget it. Just so, whatever. So America. Uh, speaking of <laughs> speaking of America, marijuana. <laughs> A 60-year-old American driver was arrested last week after he took a wrong turn and ended up at the Canadian border with over 400 pounds of cannabis and more than $600,000 of cash in his car. Well, there's, isn't that a problem, then? <laughs> so, apparently, authorities said that he was following his GPS that he had incorrectly entered the address into when he ended up in the border crossing line Canada's Rainbow Bridge border crossing in Niagara Falls. So I guess he was in Canada trying to come into America. Luckily, Canadian officials caught him and not American officials, so he didn't. Is this like a dumbass criminal? Obviously. Weed's legal in New York and Canada. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. What? Like You're Wait, literally going from one heck? legal state. So he probably was just driving through, entering into New York, and then planning on heading down to well, you know, there's some crossings with New York where there's no guards. Why not drive through there? He didn't mean to. That's what he's saying. Like, so he's just... He's, he's an idiot. This is one of the dealers using his own product is what this is. He's using his and his buddies. Yeah. So he was... The Canadians charged him on sp suspicion of possession with intent to import cannabis. Isn't 400 pounds <laughs> a little more than just a suspicion? Exactly. <laughs> and you know he's important. It. Whoa. And he got hit with the possession of more than $5,000 in cash that came from or was obtained by illegal activities. What if he owned illegal? So you could have $4,999 of criminal money and you'll be okay. So he already sold about 400 pounds then. That's how he had all that money. 600000 Yeah. I mean, I don't know what weed goes for, but... Maybe that was his petty sounds cash. Sounds like he's already sold some. Maybe that's his petty cash. Was he undercutting the legal dispensaries? <laughs> Sitting Dude, outside? Hey, black, I got better deal for you. Black market marijuana is huge in these legal states. I would think, though... I mean, I don't know if they inspect the legal weed in the legal states. I would think, though, you want... I don't know, inspected stuff like you do with your meats? Oh, like FDA? Yeah, I mean... Or uh, Department of Agriculture, grade A beef? Who would well, do like, it for weed? So, would that also be department? No, it can't be because no, it's they, illegal. They use a third party basically now for it. Like, I watched that show um, on Discovery Channel, Belushi Farms, which is probably 100% made up, to be honest with you, but... You know, they get, I've watched it. It looks like real weed he's growing. No, I, I mean, I I truly believe he's growing real weed, but I'm saying the whole plot of the thing. It's probably off probably, personal use, being a Belushi. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It looks like about as much as he would need for a year. He's probably growing a heroin tree. I doubt that. You think? Nah. That Not a heroin that, tree? That died. That died way back when. 
when his brother did yeah. it. I would think that would be enough to cure the family of. I don't know. He's doing weed. His brother died of heroin. Heroin. He's probably growing a heroin tree. No. Nah. Heroin doesn't grow on a tree. Well, I'm not a farmer, dude. <laughs> heroin comes from the poppy plant. I thought that was morphine. Morphine. Oh, oh man. I learned. I was listening to a podcast, The Search Engine, the one Dell Jr. talked about on his show a few weeks ago or did a promo for a few weeks ago. And I was listening to a fentanyl episode and I, I they were talking about the difference between Oxycontin comes from the plant oxycodone is made in a lab something like that well i probably just screwed that over head, right well it, that's why fentanyl is so popular you know in 2016 the united states government said that fentanyl wasn't a was not something they were concerned about it would never be a problem in america because it was just too powerful and people wouldn't ever be able to use it well you know if you and now it's the number one you know, fentanyl kills people kills more people than um, guns. Yeah, I believe that. That's why you need that Narcan. And Sam, my buddy lives out there in San Francisco. And Did he do some fentanyl? Well, he was gonna. He drives for Uber, and he has to carry Narcan around with him. In case an Uber rider. I think he does Uber. Flipping? Yeah, but he does Uber Eats, DoorDash. He doesn't have people in his car. He would not do well with that. I think they would annoy him too much. So, but he has to keep Narcan on himself. Well, in case he's like driving down the road and fentanyl like, flies through his window. Yeah, hits, hits him, him in the, the eye. Face. Yeah, ingested through eye. I'd be worried about that too. There's a lot of fentanyl going. It. Have you? Ah, never mind. What? He's yeah. gonna talk about their senator in California who doesn't know who she is and poops her pants. But that's political. Yeah, we're not talking about Feinberger. All right. Was that her name? Fine Burger? Something like that. She got a Fine Burger? Is she barbecue? <laughs> she's 90, dude. She got a grill? She's 90. I don't think right. she has she a Fine Burger match. anymore. <laughs> she looks like the bad dude on Star Wars. Oh, yeah. the Episode 3. <laughs> or the, no, he would have been Episode 6. I know who you're talking about. The Return of the Jedi or whatever. The, the last. The red one. Is that what you're talking about? The, dude with the, the old dude. The dude with the stripe. Oh, you're okay. I know what you're talking about. No, the OG, the old, like the original. One. Yeah, where like Skywalker and the Darth em- Vader the team emperor? up. The Emperor. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't he? She look like the Emperor now. Yes. She she, does. she looked dead. All right, so let's talk about Japan. It's become a weekly thing. Japan asked schools not to penalize students if they were late to class because they were groped. Okay, I, I agree with that. <laughs> You should be able to, you know, it sounds like a legitimate excuse to me. It sounds like there's a legit problem in Japan right now of people oh. getting groped. So the Japan, the Japanese government has asked schools not to penalize students if they were late or missed class because they were f- filling out a police report after getting groped on their way. To so school. you have to report that? Well, so... The Ministry of Education apparently takes it very serious when they're late to class. So he's like, oh, you'll not be late. And they get mad at that. So these girls are like, hey, we're getting touched on the bus, but we're not going to tell nobody because we don't want to make the Minister of Education mad. So they just go on to school. So you're getting mouth-shot. groped. Do you say, can you hurry up? I got to get to class. <laughs> I don't want to fill out. I don't want to fill out a report. No, I think it's just like perverts on the bus touching them, and they can't do nothing about it because they don't want to be late for class. So, well, I think that happens here on buses, city buses, and subways. I ain't never met anybody who wouldn't take if I got grown. We live in America where I wouldn't go back. We don't encourage that would be an excuse not to go back to school. Public transportation in America, we're all car culture. So apparently, you have to grope yourself driving to work in America. Do you fill out a police report for that? I think they'll uh, fill out. Hey, officer, I touched myself so, without permission. I do believe they will fill out a police report if you get caught groping yourself on the way to work. You won't be able to buy a gun either. <laughs> nope. <laughs> or anything else. He's a diddler. <laughs> yeah. So apparently groping is a, is a serious problem in Japan. The minister's request is one of several policy changes the government has put forward as a part of a campaign launched back in March to eliminate groping in public. It was okay in private. 
just not public. Oh, okay. That's weird. I mean, I've been, Japanese. I mean, <laughs> if you're in America, right? You're you work. Let's say you work downtown Atlanta, right? Okay. Capitol building. All right. Now, one of them administrative buildings next door. You work for a state senator or something. You're in your car and you grope yourself. Should that be illegal? Because you're in your personal property. Or should you have your windows tinted? And legally, your car is an extension of your house, correct? I would. Yes, I believe so. That's why they need a search warrant if you don't give permission to search it. That's why my uh, our last employer had gun rules but because of the state's laws their gun the gun rules didn't apply because state laws trumped their rules now we could have still got fired i guess but now you're gonna use the t-word what trump we're gonna get you're getting political over there i said trump duh. oh you did the e yeah id it's trump. lower case, id lowercase t id say trump and i'll do id trump id trump Id. Trump. Id. Trump. Trump. Id. Id. <laughs> that idiots. didn't work. We're idiots. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> that was just dumb. I thought we were going somewhere for a second. But it, just ended, <laughs> it ended on such a low. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> that bit didn't work. So, Back to fentanyl. <laughs> Maybe we need some fentanyl to be more entertaining. This, is, <laughs> this wasn't even planned. Well, it was planned, but the fentanyl conversation was not planned earlier. So a man in Florida who was riding a bike on the wrong side of the road <laughs> was arrested after deputies found enough fentanyl on the man to kill 4,000 people. God dang it. No wonder he was on the wrong side so, of the road. <laughs> he, was spotted, he was dying. He was spotted riding his bicycle on the wrong side of the road with no reflectors at night in the dark. Said the dude was wearing all black. What an idiot. They also found meth. This is funny, dude. You explain this. They found meth on him, a pocket knife, a bottle cap, and an O-ring. Wow. That's crazy. An O-ring, like from a car, right? Yeah. Aren't like, I got these. Well, on my wife's car, there's canister. It's no bigger oil than, filters. Your, than my wedding ring, right? Well, on my wife's car, there's an O-ring that comes with each new cartridge for your filter. It's, it's that big around. Okay. It's the size of a donut. But, but why, why, why would you put it in your pocket? Why would you put it in your police report? Was he like, using a small one to seal found, his bottle cap? You found a bottle cap and an O-ring. Well, I, I'm going to... Never mind the meth. I'm going to applaud Florida man here. He's not into the fentanyl. I think that meth was his private stash. He was being safe. Yeah, he was delivering. He was yeah. just a delivery driver, yeah, in my he was opinion. Just, he was delivering the fentanyl yeah, he knew from better. point A to point B. The meth is what they probably paid him with. So I was reading the story, and the police are like, Sir, do you have anything on you that'll hurt us? Do you have any weapons of any type? He says, I got a bottle cap and an O ring. You, you know. Then they said, Do you have anything else on you? He goes, I got a knife and some meth. You know, there are no, there's no place in America that's when you get down and dirty redneck. Florida rednecks are the most oh, redneck. Native Central Florida rednecks. Yes. Yeah. Like I'm talking generational native, like fourth generation. I you sixth, can tell from a distance. Sixth. You think? Yeah. Fourth, you're still morphing. Oh. Okay. You're not all the way there. Six. Every time we go to the races, we see them. We're like, oh my goodness. Oh, that whole ride through Central oh, Florida. Yeah. Oh, jeez. You you don't get out to get gas. No. You don't get gas. You don't run out. It's either the zombie apocalypse or fourth generation Floridians. I don't know which. Six. Six. Six generation. I think you kind of get a little sloped in the head after four. It's You're getting there. But you still got, your faculties are still working up here in the top. I think six gen, your single wide has no floor and holds six, in the ceiling. Fourth gen Floridian is like fourth gen Arkansas, South Arkansas. Yeah, I would think. And six gen, six gen, you've given up the car you're walking now. Yeah. Living, you don't know where you live. If you really want to see the bad ones, it's the next gen, seventh gen. Yeah. That's, whew. Seventh gen Floridians don't even wear Crocs. They don't even lie to you. Can they don't you even give have me toes. some food? They're yeah. like, nah, I need $10 for some meth or some crack or some, maybe some fentanyl. Yeah, their Do sign, you have any? Their signs on the side of the road are very obvious. They yeah. ask for what they want. I, need, I want my meth. I need beer meth. and meth. Fentanyl's Fentanyl, okay. please. If you give it to me for free. 
I was listening to the whole fentanyl, why they put it in their drugs to make it more potent. I haven't finished it yet. Isn't killing off your customers a bad idea? It's not a good customer service plan. No, that's what I was thinking. It's like, you're not, you're not going to have any repeat customers with that business. No. Mono. We're going to say Billy over there sold Teresa some of that stuff, and she's dead now. So we probably don't want to I ain't go going to Billy. Billy, no. I'm going to go Russell. Well, then Billy killed him, too. It's not a good business plan, if you ask me. No, I agree. You want to sell something that gets people hooked. Not kills them. Like air conditioning in Georgia. Wouldn't crack? That should almost be wouldn't illegal. Wasn't the crack pandemic similar to this, though? Didn't it kill people? Yeah, it did. Kill people all over. And they were shooting in the streets, killing people. It was like the Wild West. Right. I grew up in D.C. during that period. It was. 80s? Yeah, they were shooting all over the place. Was it really? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's um, what's his name? Richard Pryor caught on fire? Yeah. Ran around on fire. I had a friend. I can't say his name because he might kill me. Please don't. But in high school, he was real poor. And one day he cruised up with a brand new Nissan 300ZX. Yeah. And we're like, how could he afford that? And someone said, he's selling the crack. <laughs> he's selling the crack. And you know what happened within a month? He was, he was selling some crack. No, he was in jail. Uh, he was selling some crack. So he was working for the government. And the cops surround him. And he ran their car with his brand new 300 perfectly destroyed, wonderful car. And he got injured. They took him to the hospital. D.C. emergency room, D.C. hospital. And then they took him to jail. We, he did not graduate with us. you believe that? I do. Because he had crack with him and a gun. Well, I mean. Money. Usually the criminal life leads to. You know, not graduating high school. Well, well, we even found out it opened up an investigation into car dealerships selling cars for cash because he was only 15. But isn't, <laughs> isn't, never mind. I mean, that's a government conspiracy because I think crack something the CIA invented just to. Well, you know, they had a plane and it gets shot down full of drugs. Yeah. And there were some survivors. Tom Cruise made a movie about it. Yeah. But I don't think that was crack. I think he called it crack, crack, crack. I thought it was cocaine. Well, that's what they make crack out of. I thought crack was chemically made, like meth. I have no idea. All I know about crack is what uh, what I hear on TV. Yeah. Dave and Chappelle. I think it's cocaine. Cocaine. Dave Chappelle's face was white, just like he did cocaine on crack. That was... Um, but he had burned lips red, for the pipe. Red balls. <laughs> that was a great skit, red balls. So a woman in Arizona... A woman steals an electric scooter from a Target in Arizona and is arrested with a dead battery at a crosswalk when trying to cross a busy intersection. Wouldn't you check the battery charge before you stole an electric scooter? She was probably shopping and just kept going. So this woman in Arizona steals the handicapped scooter from the Target and 11 Oh, one of those sit-down scooters. Yeah, with the cart, the shopping cart in front of you. Oh. Yeah, 11 miles away. She is arrested when the battery dies as she's in the middle of the street crossing it. That, once again, is an editorial on poor policing. <laughs> Someone cruising in a Target, because I've seen them. They're painted red with the Target yes. logo on it. She should have been caught a lot closer miles away. to Target. That's, what, 15 minutes in a car around here? Well, they said, well you, you said she didn't try to run. I guess she really needed it. She wanted a free one. She was going <laughs> to repaint it at home with spray paint. Put some wheels on it. Yeah. <laughs> some spinners. <laughs> Make it her own. Oh, that's too bad, lady. <laughs> yeah, police said she didn't try to run once it broke down. They had been following her for 15 <laughs> minutes. Those cops were just toying with her, dude. <laughs> Could you imagine being the pedestrian at the on the other side of the road and you see this woman... I imagine this woman is overweight. So I'm I'm picturing like a 450, 500 pound lady on a red Target scooter, just they need to down the sidewalk, you know, over the bumps, over the divots, all that, just booking it. And a big lady, she ain't going fast, like maybe a mile and a half, two miles an hour. I'm picturing that, and the cops like Reno now on one behind her. Dude, I've seen some of these 600 pounders at Walmart. 
That thing will do at eight miles an hour as they run into the aisle. That's the one that's the end cap over. Where they have two kids sitting in the uh-huh. footwell and then one sitting behind it dragging. Bless them. Bless their, Bless little, their hearts. little hearts. Bless your little heart. All right, Jamie. Let's jump into Ask Reddit. Apparently, this is uh, where we teach people things. Actually, it's where it makes us think. So, first question I have for you from Ask Reddit this week is, if you could put any object on the surface of Mars purely to confuse NASA scientists, what would it be? A Red Bull. They would think Max Van Stupenheimer was there. <laughs> they just he won the race and kept the- going. So some of the answers I saw on Reddit, uh, one guy said a page from a Martian newspaper pondering the possibility that there might be life on Earth. That'd be funny. Another guy said a NASA spacecraft, one that NASA has no record of, like something they had never even built, but has the NASA logo all over it and clearly has NASA origins, just not our NASA. So when they saw it, like, hey, wait a minute. You know, Elon might snatch something for us. Because, you know, they don't even have rockets at NASA anymore. Elon sure. provides them. He could snatch something and take it up there. But will we ever land on Mars? That's my question. I mean, we haven't landed on the moon yet, so you think we'll ever really land on Mars? Oh, I think we landed on the moon. I don't. I've With we a telescope, been, you can see the debris. We haven't been back since. That's just garbage that's floated up from Earth. <laughs> well, I mean, people don't pick up after themselves here. I see it all the time. I think I would leave... Something like um like a like a dirty mo dirty mo like a shot glass or something. Dirty mo media. <laughs> like How about a cooter dirty. shooter sticker? Dude, a cooter shooter <laughs> sticker on a Martian moon rock would be yeah. awesome. That's it. That's my answer right there. Picture of the snail after it won the cannonball. Leave the run. snail. Up there, yeah. Let, let's just put what the Prius. What is this Prius doing up here? It looks well, more like a spacecraft. We'll use the Prius that we became Cannonball Run champions in this year. We'll I th- put that Prius with a cooter shooter sticker on the A big, I'm talking like a four-foot cooter shooter sticker on the hood of the Prius. If we get the Prius up there, I think we would be. we would get to our million subscribers fast. I think we'd get there. I would watch. We think Fox would pay for the be the only cooter shooters on Mars. You think Fox would pay for the rights to telecast it? Fox would screw it up. We'll go with NBC. Yeah, they might not mess up. All right, the next. CW. We'll just have to do the production for them. So, in fifty years, what's something people will be nostalgic for? I'm already nostalgic for the first Nintendo I had. That was like oh, yeah. game breaking. You know, that was just amazing. For me, it was, I mean, I had the Nintendo, but it, for me, it was probably either the Sega Genesis. That was a good gaming system. I don't know how that disappeared. I don't either. It was great. They said get rid of those cartridges because you got to turn them. <laughs> yeah. Blow the dog hair out of it. It still don't work. Mom. Need a new one. Mom. I ain't spent $40 on that crap. I wonder how much games were back then. Weren't they like 40 bucks, 25 they're like 75 now. Well, have you noticed everything's more expensive now? Games Potato are like, chips went from like two ninety nine for a bag of Lay's to five ninety nine since video, COVID. Video games are like $75 and you don't even get a hard copy. I haven't bought a hard copy game since PlayStation 3. Dude, I was driving down the road. It's going, probably been a good five years. Going to Makonga? I saw a boomer's trash in the middle of the road. Yeah. I couldn't tell what magazine it was, but the wind was blowing the pages and a centerfold popped up of a naked lady. There's someone out there still buying these magazines. I didn't stop because I was like, it's free on the internet. <laughs> free on the internet. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to stop and pick up this dirty magazine off the side of the road. I can get it free on the internet. Yeah, you can't hide the magazines. All right, Jamie, let's talk some racing, man. Did you watch the race this weekend? Which one? Any of them. I watched the SRX race. Did I you? think old Tony Stewart put a whooping on the oh. rest of the field. I mean, just a whooping. Haley Deegan finished second. I mean, Well, she ain't, maybe she ain't as bad as everyone thinks. She's just not good in trucks. I mean, she, well, she says everybody's out to get her. Maybe she's right. I don't know. 
I don't know. I just, I think she's just had a lot of bad opportunity or a lot of bad luck in the trucks, I guess. Her teammates are winning in the trucks. So what did you think about the Indy road course race on Sunday? To be honest, I think it was the best one we've had yet. The best road course? I mean, there wasn't a lot. Of, they changed starting zone. There wasn't a lot of beating and banging on turn one unless it was, you know, our friend Joey, who he didn't seem to know what track he was on. Joey looked lost. I mean, Joey's just an idiot. I mean, there were some times he wrecked. Caution didn't come out. No. Well, he locked him up that one time. He didn't know what he was doing. That was it, though. After, I think he had fentanyl in his... Joey looked like he wasn't even in the same zip code. I think he had fentanyl in his air conditioner. And it was affecting his driving. From that dude in Canada, Canada so, that didn't know where the border was. I'm just... That's insane to me. Like, wouldn't you think when you get in that long line of cars, you're sitting there in this long line of cars, right? You got a car full of marijuana. And... You don't have, you don't buy four hundred pounds of marijuana recreationally. Maybe that was the problem with Joey. He had four hundred pounds in the back. Maybe, and the, it just his car was out of alignment. So you get in line. You're sitting in bumper to bumper, not moving traffic, right? You got four hundred pounds of marijuana and six hundred thousand dollars in little safe boxes in the back floorboard of your car. Would you not think when you come to a complete stop and you see a row of cars as far as the eye can see? That something's not right here? I would think you would do a U-turn. Or, or take, take your the tags, map. take the tags off your car, take the six hundred cash. And run? Yeah. <laughs> or walk away. That light might the, be suspicious. Light the car on fire. That had run. to be a backpack full of cash though. That's not a you know, even at No, 20s. it was multiple box they said it was multiple safe deposit or like safe boxes. I'm I'm imagining those little Square or Isn't rectangle. Isn't that kind of stupid, though? Because boxes. if I see a lockbox in your car, I'm going to say, hey, they got something valuable in there. Especially if you see a floorboard full of lockboxes. Yeah. Like, this dude was... I mean, if it's just sitting in Kroger reusable bags, you're going to go, that dude's groceries are going to spoil out here. We don't talk about smart criminals because if they were smart criminals, we, we wouldn't be talking about them. We wouldn't know about them. So, luckily for us, the world is full of dumb criminals. All the way from Japan to the United Kingdom, to Canada to America, we have found dumb, well, let's stupid give, criminals. Let's give props to the mafia. The mafia? We haven't talked about the mafia, have we? No, in a long time. Well, that's I a, mean, the France mafia. I'm saying we haven't talked about the regular mafia. Think of all the money the FBI spends to catch those guys. And they usually get off scot free. It's because they have they're good doing, lawyers. They're doing something right when it comes to crime, right? Crime pays for them. Yeah. But it doesn't pay for everybody. So you need a syndicate. You can't solo it. You ever been on Reddit? I mean, physically? Yeah. I, mean, I, I read some Reddit last night. Like Reddit on the app, Reddit. Yeah. Social media. It's app. on my phone, but you okay. won't allow me to touch it. <laughs> no, and I don't want to see it either. There's a lot of rabbit holes to go down. Not, in you're Reddit. not touching it, and I don't want to see it. Period. No, so go on Reddit. Look up Florida Man. Oh, that's a long, Man. deep rabbit hole there. It's the best Reddit community that I've found yet. Fun, funny news, Florida Man, Offbeat is really good. Uh, there's a lot of really good Reddit. I joined a group, Quaker Haters. Quaker, and you're a Quaker. Right, and so is everybody on there. They just make fun of the Quaker religion. So it's a Quaker You hater. have to prove you're a member to get on. I had to wait for an approval process. Prove you're a Quaker? Yeah. They don't want non-Quakers. How do you prove you're a Quaker? You send them a picture of you I, and a can of Quaker oats? I mean, you're a member, yeah. Well, I, I sent them my uh, Ben Franklin You were dressed as Ben Franklin? And said I, well, I lied. I said I, I was dressed as... This is me going to... This is James Farrow from the Quaker, colonial days. Quaker church. In my Quaker clothes. Not the guy related to Al Gore. The other one. Yes, the one related to Nixon. And Calvin Coolidge. The smart one. And Calvin Klein. No, it was Hoover. I'm sorry. I just accredited <laughs> the wrong president Hoover? being a Quaker. Hoover was a Quaker. The one who invented the vacuum cleaner? Yes. And was president. <laughs> Daniel Hoover? Yep. Daniel Hoover. <laughs> and I, you know, I, I don't, actually his okay, middle was name gonna, was Dyson. I was going to say, I don't know how you Calvin Dyson no. Hoover. Was it really? 
No. <laughs> well, I would believe you because you went to college for history. You're a history major. Well, and, you know, Quakers write everything down. They believe in education, even from, like, Man, we're Baptists. So. Pre-George Washington times. Yeah. So they figured you need to be able to read the Bible. So they wrote it all down. So everything in my family is written down from, like, Sherwood Forest. While they're running around naked throwing arrows at people. Yes, my Until family. George Fox showed up and said, be I, a Quaker. I wish my family would have wrote more stuff down. It would be, be cool to be able to, like, read what they were thinking back in that time. Like, my great-great-great-grandfather, George Washington Carden. It'd be cool to read like what he was thinking about during, because you know he fought in that Civil War thing. That, oh yeah, we had bloodiest battle in the Civil War. He I had a James it. Sparrow fighting that thing. Yeah, he was on the other side. They yeah. lost. Well, he thought the slaves should be freed and fought for the Union. Well, I don't actually know what my great 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 grandfather. Well, I guarantee you, fought, they were shooting at each but other. I know who he fought for because he, his brothers and sisters and uncles and cousins were all in the. South. Well, so. you know, on my mom's side. I don't know what he technically believed, but I call him the Georgian. But he had the coolest name ever. Yeah, George Washington. Like, Carden. I don't know. Not why. Carver. Carden. I yeah, I know. I didn't know that. Like, I wish I'd have known that. Like, I might have named my fourth son that I, well, I don't have a one. You still son. have time. No, I'm done. I don't know if you have the money, but you got the time. I'd have to adopt now. You'd have to get a side hustle. <laughs> Two of them. Kids are expensive. Did you get snipped? No. No? Well, how do you know you're shooting blanks? I just know. You can do it by taste? No. We can't have no more kids. <laughs> just a rule? Your wife put down? No more kids? Yep. <laughs> okay. Wrote it in stone. <laughs> well, Chiseled it. That's probably the best. Uh... No, after the twin, the twins wasn't the easiest pregnancy, so. Well, I mean, you're popping out two instead of one. I know. Do you imagine? No, I can't. Yeah, I, got, I watched the C-section. That was insane. Like The doctor's like, do you want to see? I was like, heck yeah. I stood up. Yes, if you want to see the C-section. Yeah. I mean, that's why it's called the C-section. <laughs> no, it's, it's... I saw the C-section. It's insane. Like, you see them taking organs out, putting them on top of, like, bloop, babies. Like, oh, you're going to put that back, right? <laughs> I've seen a C-section with my youngest. Now, there was not twins there. Yeah, it was... So... Everything's different with twins. Let's just say that. I was like, you can Love put... them to death. I told the doctor, so you can put that back in, right? I mean, we got the kid. <laughs> He's good. But just... That... The organs, right? They go back yeah. where they're supposed to go. Yeah. So no, Denise can't have any more kids. So we're we're done. Okay. The hysterectomy fix that. Yeah, that'll do it. It solves all problems with that. But we probably it's funny now that our kids are getting older. We've had conversations, and we would probably have more kids. Well, you you can adopt. There's plenty of ones out there. Yeah. No. I, I've, at this point, John's sixteen, so. It's not that far off before uh, we're having some. If we were going to adopt, I was going. I would adopt like a six-year-old. <laughs> uh, yeah, just a year or two. Just get out of high school. See ya. Work around the house. See ya. Need somebody to cut my grass. Yeah, well, my two kids are getting a little old. They're no more cutting grass. They're going to move away one day, maybe. Hopefully. All right. So let's let's legit talk about the race now that we veered <laughs> left and chased. That the McDowell that. dude did pretty good, Brad. All right, so don't forget, sometimes crap, it does happen. And sometimes you need a plumber to fix it. In that case, we would call Danny Carden Plumbing, the official plumber of the Race Car Spelled Backwards podcast. The guys you call when crap happens. Did you enjoy the race, yes or no? I did. I'm, I'm Even though there was no cautions. One. It's the first race since 2012 that only had one caution flag. I don't know how I feel about it. Like, I didn't think it was a great race. I didn't think it was a bad race. At the end, though, I was thinking Suarez overcame the the hose. Yeah. And I don't mean women that give it away for free, the air hose. <laughs> and I really thought Chase might catch up and Dude, pass Chase him. had something, and I thought McDowell was going to screw up at the end, and Chase was going to get by. Well, I figured his pit crew just wasn't going to let him win. But they did. He what? didn't make a mistake. No, McDowell, and he did. McDowell ran good from qualifying on. Yeah, it wasn't a fluke. I mean, he legit. More power to him. I was happy for him. I watched um, IndyCar. Scott Dixon, congratulations. Ty Gibbs won the Xfinity race. Um, Majesty won the truck race. You know, congrats for all those guys. I really thought at lap one of the Xf of the Indy race at the road course, I'm like this is going to be an exciting weekend. And he had cars 
all those indie cars launching through the air dude took the lead from like 17 back i mean it was insane yeah i thought there was some uh dukes of hazard action going on with the indie cars to me the indie road course without cautions or stage breaks reminded me of like an old school sports car race like an imsa style well, race like our 24 hours a day yeah. and i i don't i don't hate that style of racing but for me i'm like ADD. I'd rather watch a four ten sprint race. Well, maybe your first fifty laps. Your first twenty four hour, they race like NASCAR. The last lap, those two Porsches. Insane. But it's different when you're there. I I think going. That's why I said. Yeah, you got to go. I texted Jamie yesterday. I said Watkins Glen twenty twenty four question mark. I think it would be cool to go to one of these road course races and camp out all weekend because I don't think you get the whole experience watching it on TV. No, I don't think so either. So Michael McDowell, like we said, I'm all for it. Michael McDowell drives for Love's Truck Stops, and when we became Cannonball Run Champions, we preferred Love's Truck Stops. So, yeah, our our non-sponsor sponsor. Yeah, our, our unofficial, official, unofficial sponsor, Love's. Yeah, all for it. Clean uh, bathrooms, good coffee. Can't man, Except for that one stall, Jamie. Uh, Arkansas in. Love's. Don't. Is that the one you pooped on the wall? Yes. Yeah. Don't go in there. I acted like I was a local. He thought he would live there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we had all the ringers come in this weekend. We had Shane Van Gisbergen. Can you really call them ringers when most of them finished after the 20th position? Well, Van SVG didn't. He finished 10th. Brody finished. That's respectful for a guy that uh, we thought might be a fluke in Chicago. Well, Ricky Stenhouse hit every one of them. I think Ricky, I, I Ricky think, and Joey were playing bumper cars. Ricky's running for the Republican president nomination, I think, for With 2024. All those so he hit every other country out there. He, I mean, he literally hit everybody. He, he wanted went, to, when he finished, he wanted to recount on how many cars he hit. He's like, I don't. <laughs> in Georgia. Sure. He wanted Georgia to do the recount for bumps. <laughs> <laughs> That's so wrong. No politics. So, so Shane finishes 10th. Brody finishes 22nd. Mike Rockefeller finishes 24th. Button finishes 28th. Kumba Yashi looked lost, dude. I'm just saying. How do you say his first name? Komi? Kamui? Kamui? Kamui Kubiyashi. You see him dive bomb turn one and it, just flip out? Dale Jr. said on his podcast last week he thought Kobayashi was going to be the winner. That dude was out of control, he man. Did, he looked as lost as A.J. Allmendinger did. He looked like he was wearing a kamikaze headband looking for an American carrier to crash. He looked like Joey Logano in the first stage. It was horrible. Literally, Joey Logano looked like he didn't even belong on the racetrack. He looked like an amateur, amateur ARCA driver. So let's take the O away from his name. He's just Joey Logan now. Logan. Logano. Logan. Joey Logan. Yeah. All that hair. Yeah. Like Joe Rogan. I, I can't stand his flipping hair. He's man. Joey his, Rogan. His hair. Joe Rogan's cousin. Joey Logano's hair reminds me of the poop emoji. I think he's got a weave, dude. It's not real. He yeah, better he, not go to Popeyes. It's a, it's a weave. Don't go to Popeyes. They'll rip it right They'll through the drive through window. <laughs> yeah, it's over. That, that ain't real, Joey. Shoot. Uh, Give me that weave. He's done. AJ Allmendinger. Is he coming back to Cup next year? Probably shouldn't. I don't know. I'm torn on it because Justin Haley is going to go. He's moving up in the ranks. He's going to go drive for Rick Ware Racing. So that leaves. Do you it. think he is suspicious that Collig's going to fall apart? Why would you do that? First of all, we talked a little bit of it. Why would you go to Rick Ware Racing? Do they offer you crazy money? They have to. Did they change their policy maybe on Collig the treatment wasn't, of girlfriends? But maybe Collig wasn't offering him a multi-year deal without bringing more money to the table. So maybe his only option, we all like Justin Haley, but maybe his only option was to go there. Do you think you sit down to sign the contract and then it says my sons are allowed to hit your wife or girlfriend? Maybe. I doubt it, though. I don't think they're in the picture at all. Anymore. I think an illegal contract's illegal. I think Rick Ware put um, Cody and Shane up for adoption. They've been adopted. Oh, I think he threw him in jail. He said, I don't, I'm sorry. He did. Uh, they're working at a Chinese factory is what I heard. No, I heard they're over in the Ukraine trying to get some contracts for oil. <laughs> they're probably working in the Ukraine. Or China. 
One they, of the two. They're probably mid-level executives in Ukraine. At yeah, that's company. that's all. Daddy that a Chinese oil them. company. Yeah, Chinese oil company in the Ukraine. Their buddy Hunter hooked them up. Yeah. <laughs> oh lordy. So AJ, I, but with Haley leaving, I don't see colleague letting AJ go back. I see. But AJ's the, not winning. But AJ has experience. AJ won as a part timer. I don't think colleagues equipment is where it needs to be for AJ to win. I think AJ is emotional, very emotional. And when he goes down the rabbit hole and can't see sunlight, he gets lost and he's down that rabbit hole right now and he can't fe- see sunlight and he's, he's not winning dude. His last chance to win, regardless of the chase is the Roval and Watkins Glen. In my opinion, that's it. I think Watkins Glen is going to be won by Chase Elliott. Oh, and I beat you again. You're going to take him, aren't you? After I took him and he came in second. Yeah, I'm going to take him and he's going to finish 32nd again. (laughs) It's going to be my luck. Kyle Larson has revealed his new paint schemes for next year's Indy 500 and the Coke 600. They're going to have the McLaren Orange added to the cup car. I think it's good looking. I I honestly expect Kyle Larson to do very well in, in the Indianapolis 500. I think he'll do very well in the Cup Series, too. Well, I mean, yeah, but I'm saying I think in the Indy 500, I think he'll do good. You think he'll do like uh, Kirk Busch? Kirk Busch, yeah. So Saturday night at 1 a.m., well, Sunday morning at 1 a.m., Kyle Larson wins his second straight Knoxville National, or second. I guess I think it's the second straight. Well, I think maybe he should take his winnings and split it up with the other race car drivers that don't have the money that he has. You sound, like, you sound like the rest of the idiots on I'm making Twitter. fun of them. I'm making fun of those idiots. No, he shouldn't. Winners keep the purse. Kyle Larson puts a lot of money back into sprint cars. Get I, better and you'll win. I'm going to a sprint car race soon. I'm telling you. I have to. Like, I absolutely love Sprint. Have you found out where the closest one is to us? I want to go to Eldora Million next year. I want to you know, Snowball week. Derby isn't too far from us. We've been through Oklahoma. The Snowball Derby. That's in um. Oh, Chili Bowl. Chili Bowl, yeah. yeah Snowball chili Bowl. Derby's in. They, in don't Pensacola. you want to experience the Chili Bowl flu? No, I don't. But I would like to do the Eldora Million the Friday night before race and then the Crown Royal race on Saturday. I think that would be a cool event. Those cars are sick, dude. They're insane. Like, let's put 500 horsepower in a go kart. You definitely need an extra set of balls to drive those cars. I think they come standard. I think they do. I think yeah. they have a little pouch for you to set them in, uh-huh. just so you don't crush them. It's a ball pouch, is what they call it. Yeah, or a nut sack. Some they get an old pouch. like chewing tobacco pouch. Some would pouch. call it a nut sack, but others would call it. They a get ball an old pouch. Redmond pouch. You put it in there. <laughs> you can put it in your pocket. Yeah, it's your Redmond pocket. Introduce them to your other ones. So apparently the rumor in the garage right now is Shane Van Gisbergen will be coming to NASCAR driving for Trackhouse Racing next year. I don't know if they're going to get a charter for him or what, but it sounds like it's unofficially, officially, unofficially Or confirmed. they just make them qualify in. Like old school. Like every week? Yeah. Like not? he ran that truck for Nice on Saturday. And he started figuring out the track. There wasn't enough laps for him. Though. Yeah, he finished 19th, which ain't bad. You know, he's the first driver since Terry Labonte to have two back-to-back top tens in his first two starts. Well, he, I figured he, he was. He officially has more top tens this season than Ryan Priest. I believe it. <laughs> That's crazy, though. He's only ran in two races. He finished ahead of Haley Deegan. In the trucks. I think he's got a lot of talent. And I think he's his... No, he's not a fluke. His international draw is going to bring money with him to the table. I think he brings Red Bull back into he's the sport. He's so energetic when he's interviewed. And uh, when he was on, I think it was the download, didn't he say he doesn't like the media? And, and um, he's all about the media in America. I haven't listened to the download with him on it. Well, we've always said... Out of all the English colonies, they're our closest cousins. Them, the Scottish, and the Irish. I think I did hear that he said that um, when he's at home, he doesn't deal well with the media. But when he's here, he enjoys talking to the media. Is the Australian press insane? 
I don't know. I think because Are they like the British press. Honestly, I think if he stays here long enough and races here long enough, he'll feel the same about the media as he does here as he does there. Well, you know, if you we we were once had press passes, but everybody there's the same person. Oh yeah, because they don't they won't grant us a press pass anymore. Well, it works because we're a podcast. Are we really a podcast still? Like what? Do, Technically, we're serial. We do podcasts and like videos. So what would we be? We're a media company. Yeah, we're multimedia. I mean, we're a show. Yeah, you would think. I don't yeah. know. They, you know, NASCAR's always been a little bit behind the times. Yeah, they'll catch up eventually. I mean, it was the Winston series long after we found out cigarettes cause cancer, right? Yeah, we were just killing the... See, it's kind of like the fentanyl thing. It's a bad well, business to... Oh. oh, Siri's getting involved now. Siri's talking on my watch. Don't you remember? I remember being 13 years old going down to Richmond to a race. And getting a pack of cigarettes. A 10-pack Yes. of Winston's. Not the full 20-pack, a 10-pack. They didn't care how old I was. They didn't even ask how old you were. It was were. like the late 80s, early 90s. We would walk through. I would go through with my dad's buddies who smoked, and they'd give you cans of dip and cigarettes, and you just, oh, they'd, hand them, yeah, they'd hand them to me as a kid. They'd give me a bag and just fill them up, and I'd give them to whoever. They wanted to get you hooked. Like fentanyl, dude. That's what I'm saying. It's a bad business model. NASCAR realized we, we could, shouldn't be giving all our fans cancer. We're killing. That's why there's such a big push to bring in a younger. Is that generation. why we don't have a title sponsor anymore? It's yeah, they're scared. NASCAR. The last major one killed everybody. Winston. Well, now. And then you had five G's killing you yeah, now. Yeah, next radiation and Sprint giving you five G radiation cancer in your brain. Yeah, it's not been a good. I run. heard Monster Energy wanted to renew their contract, and they said no. Probably. Is that killing kids too? They got fentanyl well, in that monster. Probably huh? that's how they get. That's how the fentanyl dealers are smuggling their monster energy in now. Cook that can. All right, let's talk about reduce it. The Fox truck broadcast on oh, FS1. There was no truck there, dude. This was by far the worst broadcast in the history. Our of studio in the barn was in better shape than their studio. It, it looked, looked like they had black trash bags blown in the wind. Yeah, the monitors. And you could tell they weren't at the track. They were trying to follow the screen, and the camera guy kept, the producer kept changing screens, and Jamie and Phil looked like, sounded like two dogs chasing a fire truck down the road. Like, they tried to keep up. They're like, and here they go. Oh, and they're back to, oh, and here we go. And here, we're taking the green. He's down. Oh, no, where'd he go? Uh, he, he, yeah, uh, it sounded just like that for like 10 laps. It sounded Horrible. like they were watching the YouTube abbreviated race. So I put extended the, highlights. I ended up playing golf on PlayStation rather than watching the truck race. I turned it on my phone, muted it, and played golf on PlayStation. That was more entertaining than I recorded Fox it, like, but it was horrible. What I don't understand is Fox intentionally trying to tank their TV deal. Oh, Which I don't think they're going to even participate in the TV deal. This was the opening round of the Truck Series playoffs. Would you not think you would want to put a little bit of emphasis into your broadcast? Look, I like Jamie Little. I think Jamie Little is a great pit road reporter. I do not so, think Jamie, Phil, and Michael make a good booth. I don't know if it's Jamie. I don't know if it's Phil. I don't know if it's Michael. I just don't think those three together. When Alex Alexander is in there, I don't think it's as bad. Well, I just don't think Jamie, Jamie and Phil and Michael sound like they're arguing the whole time to prove who knows the most about racing. Like Michael and Phil Parson are telling stories. These aren't two champions of the sport. Michael Waltrip drove like 739 races before he got his first victory. But he got two. Didn't he get two Daytona 500 wins? Two Daytona 500s and maybe a Talladega or two. Well, I mean, he won. Yeah, right? no. What Phil Parsons? He ain't got a whole lot of victories behind his, his name. His brother was a champion, though. But that doesn't. <laughs> I know. It doesn't rub off. Your brother's mm -hmm. a lawyer, but you can't walk into a court and do it whatever you want. Oh yes, I can. <laughs> You're paying for it. Yeah. Hey, Jamie got a haircut. Everybody. Buzz cut. <laughs> He's got a haircut too like hot. mine. I got too hot Saturday. That's what happened to me. Yeah, I was like, like, screw this. I, 18 years ago, I got hot and my hair gave up. Puddle of sweat in my eyes, working out in the yard. It's 
You know, it wasn't that hot. It was 86 degrees, but like 98%. It was horrible. So before we jump into the um, motels, let's talk about the points as they run. So currently, it's close, man. It's really close. With Michael McDowell winning, I don't know who gets in. You got Chase Elliott will probably win his way in. I think Ty, I think Bubba Wallace. I don't know. What do you think? I mean, man, poor Ty Gibbs got bumped. No, this is the points points. This isn't the playoff point. The playoff points are over here. So it's not in playoff point order. So Bubba Wallace and Ty Gibbs are on the line now. McDowell is in with a win. So that's 14. We've got 14 winners. No, what I'm saying is Ty Gibbs got bounced. He was like higher up. Oh, yeah. He got knocked down. And yeah. I honestly thought Ty Gibbs was going to do better yesterday. I expected to see him because he was so fast in qualifying and he dominated in the. Well, I think if Chase race. is going to get in, it's all up to next week. That's what I mean. You got Watkins, Glenn, and Daytona. If that's two new winners, that gives you – we've got 13 winners total right now. So that's three. You got Brad and Kevin who are pretty much locked in. Not if winners come in and no. bounce them for not having a win. That's what I mean. So you got three drivers right now. You got Brad, Kevin, and Bubba getting in on a win. I mean getting in on points. If Watkins Glenn, Chase Elliott wins, that means Brad and Kevin are fighting. To, yeah. Which their points are high enough. But going into Daytona, one of those guys, they basically are in a win situation too. Well, McDowell's won Daytona. He can win a second time. I think the way Chase Elliott ran at the Indy Road Course is a precursor for what he's going to do at Watkins Glen. I agree. And if you look at the, I printed up the results for Watkins Glen last year, Chase Elliott finished fourth and Kyle Larson won. So that tells me that Hendricks is probably going to be pretty fast. Well, they didn't really show. Chase showed. Well, Chase Larson was top 10, the rest of them. My goodness. Alex Bowman was fifth. They had three cars up there. I don't really count Bowman. William Byron was 15th after he tried to cheat all weekend and lost half his crew. It's probably not a good idea. I mean, you got to be better at cheating. You got to try harder now, I think. With these single source parts, it's not as easy to cheat. No. All right, Jamie, we're racing in Watkins Glen next weekend. Where would we not want to stay at if we were going to Watkins Glen? And staying in a motel. First off, there's a lot of violence in these. Not really a lot of funny, fun, fun. So, really, if anyone is a victim of violence. Domestic gonna, violence. Um, yeah, National Domestic Violence Hotline is 800-799-SAFE, S-A-F-E, or 7233. I'm going to repeat the number, 800 799 Seven two three three. There is no reason to put put up with domestic violence. And if you or somebody you spouse, know, spouse, child, anyone, just yeah. If you or somebody you know is dealing with domestic violence, please feel free to use this number for the domestic violence hotline. One eight hundred seven nine nine safe seven two three three safe. So we'll get into it. Won't name the motel, but it's all free for you guys. You can go to TripAdvisor. Yeah, we they Priceline, Google. Yeah, they publish this stuff. Yeah. So don't hesitate to reach out and read it. So this is a Christine K. One out of five. One fifth. Yeah, a fifth. It's a fifth of Jack Daniels. This it. place sucks. No stars. All right, well, she fell down that rabbit hole immediately. It's been a while, too. Yeah. The Zero Star Trap hadn't caught anybody in a while, so. Lots of drug, drug activity, and DSS put sex offenders here. I don't know what that is. Department of Secret Service. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> this place is disgusting. Full of nasty individuals. It's filthy. The nastiness is just appalling. They kind of just covered that up, didn't they? Yep. It's, 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 it's appalling, appalling, folks. Yeah. Not even close to being a good place. Okay. You kind of painted that picture for us, Christine. Yeah, somewhere around disgusting. Disgusting. Then full she of repeats. Nasty, filthy. Not kid friendly. Of course. Well, well, she's she's called this place in two sentences so far. Disgusting, nasty, filthy, 
nastiness, appalling. Not family friendly or kid friendly. Not a good place. Fleas wouldn't even stay. Mm. Mm. Full of ex cons, mm -hmm. sex offenders. Well, you already told us DSS puts them there. Active drug addicts. Active ones. They're actively used. Well, how does she know they're no. drug addicts? What if they're not even hooked yet? She kind of reveals All later. Right, Karen. She, well, she stays there quite often. All right. This is tied to NASCAR. Oh, okay. Yeah. Always violence. I think she stays here once a year for Watkins Glen. Nasty, dirty rooms. Yeah, you kind of cover that. <laughs> like Kamala Harris just throwing out three words. To be sentences. honest, this place really looks run down. Yeah, you kind of said that. It doesn't look like a very happy place. Obviously mm -hmm. not. There is this one room that has a brown door, and the rumor is somebody got killed in there, and they don't run run it out. I think that was a smell. They don't run problem. it out anymore. Yeah. But who knows? And then she does a smiley face, funny oh. ha emoji. My own experience scared the shit out of me scared her i think she kind of painted a picture that this might be a place that would scare you i'm scared i was sleeping after i sprayed bug killer on under and around the bed hmm. i bring a sleeping that doesn't bag sound safe. well she brings a sleeping bag just in case isn't that what killed the what made the people at camp lejeune so sick is the bug spray in the water yeah so she's not even going to be able to get on a lawsuit for camp lejeune so it's. I, mean, I don't think she's. I don't think this is safe. She's Spray not bug. accent military. I don't think. I, this don't sound safe. She might. She might Spray. be like a bug Navy Spray. SEAL. It's all that bug spray on you. The chemicals seeping into your skin. You're sleeping with it in. Well, it says and you put it in your bed. No, no, no. It's, and she put a sleeping bag with it in. A sleeping bag. Well, those well, chemicals that's her can't sleeping be bag. safe, man. Maybe she sleeps on top of it, like I don't a care how nasty blanket, it is. like we did on the Cannonball in, you Run. You don't bathe in chemicals. That's all I'm saying. It's just not safe. Well, she man. brings that sleeping bag just in case she has to sleep at such a place. Well, so do we. I don't have a lot of money, but I've got common sense. Uh, not really. If you're sleeping in this place with all that bug spray chemicals on you, girl. Mm -mm. So I'm sleeping, and someone kicks in the door screaming for Lisa. Well, we know her name's Christine. Yeah. Lisa's from... To get out, get home, and cook dinner. I'm not Lisa. Yeah. That'd be kind of scary. Yeah, I mean... Some abuser kick in the door and say, get home and cook dinner? Hey, chill out, man. I hope she told this hillbilly... Quickly. I'm not Lisa. Well, she says, I'm not Lisa right there. Yeah. I'm not Lisa. You think she's just... I'm not Lisa. Well, she didn't put an exclamation point. I wonder if she told him the room was nasty. <laughs> she, well, this room's she really probably nasty. did. I'm not hey, Lisa, this but is, this room is really, really nasty. nasty. Fleas won't even stay here. <laughs> Use some common sense, <laughs> sir. I do sleep with pepper spray and sweatpants and a t-shirt. Oh, that's good. <laughs> she didn't say she was wearing them, though. <laughs> she sleeps with them. <laughs> she, yeah, they're in the sleeping bag with her. Is she, yeah. I keep slides next to the bed. What is that? Does that mean... What does that mean? It's like a slideshow. You know, you remember you, like Chevy Chase sits in the attic watching the slides on the family vacation, Christmas vacation movie. Oh, like, so before we had that slide program made by Microsoft when you had an actual slideshow. Yeah. That's, she keeps those. She keep, it's probably family videos. It helps with the way the she talks about it. I was thinking they were like flip flops, but. Well, I guess it could have been those two, but I'm, I'm going to go with. Adidas, Nike or No, what? I'm going to go. I'm going to go with the family videos from the 70s. Have you seen there's some brand called Oyo's? No. Is it really? O Ofos. Ofos? I don't know how to say it. Old folks. It's a young guy wearing it, though, like an athlete. Yeah, I don't know. So she sleeps with pepper spray and sweatpants and t-shirt. I keep slides next to the bed, which I've already said. So I spray this wife beater in the face. With bug spray? Well, she said pepper spray. Oh, well, Slip she sleeps with bug spray, too. Well, maybe she got... I would think they... DDT probably stings pretty bad, too. She probably uses both at the same time. Psh, yeah. Psh, psh. Double time. So I, I spray the wife beater in the face, slip on my slides, and run to my car. I'm too nervous to open the car. I can't press the right button on the fob. Oh, no. That's pretty nervous. Do, 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 it's do, big. Do, 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 Lock button's always bigger, but unlock is right below it, usually. So... This dude came out of my room shooting a gun all over the place. Wow. Wow. That, that's a rock'em, sock'em turn of events. Yeah, I mean, this, this took wow. a left. She goes from pressing the key Maybe fob to Maybe he's a shot. life shooter. Yeah, not even a beater. 
Lisa must still be alive, though, if he's looking for her. He's going Old Testament. He breaks <laughs> wow. out a gun. Ba, ba, ba. Screaming, Lisa, I'm going to kill you. I, she he went from wanting dinner to killing. No, that took a, uh, yeah. that marriage is shot. I think maybe dinner needs to be on that table when he gets home. Or, yeah. In his opinion. In his opinion. Wow. You gotta have a 12 gauge at the door. I'm on. completely freaking out as I'm hiding behind my car. Yeah. Yeah. I, I then hear a car start up and I peek. This nut is still standing there loading his gun. WTF. Wow. I figure now's my chance. I unlock the door and start my car. Luckily, I backed into the parking place. I'm dunking, du dunking, I'm, du I'm ducking. Is that spelled right? Ducking. She's ducking mad. That's like a duck, though, an actual duck. I'm going to have to look at that later. <laughs> I'm ducking under the hood. She's going, quack, quack. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. This, <laughs> is, this, is, this dude beats his wife. It's pretty apparent. Oh, yeah, but we're, his wife's not here. He's yeah. not currently beating her so we can laugh. Yes. He left his wife at home making dinner. He's, he's now aggravating Lisa. I put the car into drive and look up and I see a, in a flash a newer Cadillac flat out run this guy over <laughs> and knocks him out of his shoes and he flies into the wall next to my room. Good night. And mind. she's in the car still. She's man. in her car staring at this while it happens in front of her. A lady jumps out of the caddy and screams, I killed you. You can't kill me. You suck. <laughs> wow. That's with exclamation points. I killed you. You can't kill me. You suck. That's how it would have really been. Like, that's, um... But this guy's not... You could probably yeah. use that in divorce court. Yeah. You you suck. Why are you getting a divorce? He sucks. Yeah. You try marrying him, Judge. He sucks. But and the guy... You know, sir, why are you wanting a divorce? She sucks, too. You be married to her. She sucks. But the guy is not dead. He starts swinging at her from the ground, and she goes back to the car and pulls from the trunk a tire iron and starts beating him. <laughs> Maybe they both need to call this hotline. Amen, hallelujah. I hear sirens, and a few seconds later, the police arrive. I work at the track, and it's race weekend. I just drive to the track and sleep there. That's it. All that craziness, and this she is, just... This is why Dale Jr. had to pull out his press pass to get up into the booth, because the lady had been dealing with the, with the crazy murderers. murderers. Yeah. Or her husband. Probably both. All beaten to a pulp. Yeah. Hit by a car. <laughs> No shoes and black eyes from the tire iron. Yeah, I mean, that tire iron tells you he might have worked on pit crew. So I'm just going to say, hey, it's probably a cheap room. You should expect these things, these extra pets. that You should have just slept at the at the track to start with. I mean, this I'm, kind of I'm stuff. I'm sure there's like, yeah, if you it, work at the, track, on at the track, there's I'm showers sure. at the campground. She I'm sure this goes there. on at the track, but in a probably a less aggressive manner. Well, Brad's got family up in upstate New York. That's pretty redneck, if you ask me. That sounds like Georgia stuff happened in upstate New York. Yeah, I mean, it's just northern rednecks. They're the same. Yeah, I got some Minnesota redneck relatives. Yeah, they're the same as Georgia rednecks. They just talk weird. They got a funny accent. They got accent. different weird. They got a funny accent. You know, down here in the south, we ain't got no accents. Up in Minnesota. I don't think I have an accent. They say A like Canadian. A? A. Yeah, they say that in New York, too. They say I mean, we're in Niagara County, like which is Niagara Falls. So, I mean, you can't get much closer to Canada. Than they that. say oof, though. That's where the dude had 400 pounds of marijuana trying to drive. Yeah, I got lost. There. Yeah, I've been to that bridge. I've crossed over the border crossing there. You don't, don't know, mistakenly do it with 400 pounds. Buffalo, when my wife was working out of. They don't live near Buffalo. They're like 30 minutes away from Buffalo. Is not upstate New York. Buffalo is like Detroit, Western Detroit, yeah. Eastern Detroit. East Detroit. And yeah, East I mean, Detroit. it's just an ex it's just across the lake, just a hop, skip, and a jump. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Well, you know, they do make a lot of cars in Detroit still. Yeah. And they still a lot of them in Buffalo still. Look, it's our favorite chain that I can't say. Yeah, it's, we're not going to say the chain. It's of not the W house. train. It's nope. the. Oh, all right. Let's talk about. There's it, Starlight then. in there. It's, it's up to you guys to Google that. Actually, hey, Seneca Indians. Yeah. We talked about the Seneca tribe. Oh, I've yo. I've been to the reservation there. Oh, yo. I have been to the reservation, the Seneca okay. reservation. It's well, Irene, on the way to New York. Irene. We drive right out of five. through Seneca Nation. Uh, right Irene there. H. One out of five. I met her. She was there. Look, I don't understand this part. Family. <laughs> she put family under her rating. Family. That's what she Did wants. Did she take the whole family there? She wants a family, Jamie. That's all she wants. 
Well, so she went to the Indian Chris, reservation. Chris, no, this is a, this is Irene. Irene, the place was Irene. falling apart. Toilet leaking. Shower had no shower head, so you're just basically a faucet it's up like, out your head. It's like getting peed on by a dog, but harder. And the non-smoking room smell like cigarettes. That happens a lot, though. You smoke in the hotel, the whole place. That's smell because like it, it was it was a smoking room the week before. There, you got to give it some time to air out, Irene. So that was only in North Carolina. You could air a lot of smoke in smoking room. Virginia, probably. Virginia, yeah. I think in West Virginia you can smoke in a room still. Okay. I know you can in Mississippi. If you have a Mississippi pisser, you can smoke cigarettes at the hotel. And chew dip. No, you can only dip at church. Oh, okay. It's, it's weird Mississippi rules. They don't have laws. They have rules. Well, they said outside seemed nice. I'd at least there's that. Why wouldn't you just stay outside then? Beds are comfy. What more do you want in a hotel? Free cigarettes and comfy beds. Yeah. You got it made. Uh, there's no meth heads like the last place. She didn't go in like 20 times to tell us how disgusting it was. Everything was unplugged, so at first it seemed like nothing worked. That's Internet they was not to get struck by lightning. Yeah, Irene. Internet was not working. The person at the front desk blamed it on the hurricane. Well, that could happen, Irene. In upstate New York, I don't they think so. Comes off that lake every time. The Caribbean, oh, the Finger Lake, the Caribbean it's air. It's just finger size. The Caribbean air mixes with the Canadian like air fancy, right there over to the Lake Ontario, and it shoots off hurricanes. Like I went to this fancy. It's called Lake Effect Hurricanes, though. You got to get it right. I went to this fancy uh, party once, and they had these fancy, they were sandwiches, but they were cut into little squares with no no crust. Yeah, I, I forget what they call them. Finger sandwiches, maybe. You don't finger a sandwich. What do you do with that's, the finger lakes? That's nasty. Do you think they call it finger lakes? Cause Nobody five wants fingers. to eat a sandwich that's had you your think there's five fingers at the finger lakes? Look at the map. It looks like upside down ham with five fingers. I worked with this guy, Michael McBee, one time, and... He stuck his finger in my burger. We was at the counter working, and he was mad because I was going to eat before him. So he walked over and stuck his finger right in my burger. It was funny. Anyway, go back to your finger legs. Mm -hmm. So he fingered your food. Yeah, I didn't eat it. Maybe I did. I can't remember. Beds were comfy. Everything was unplugged. We did that. Yeah. Oh, it was a hurricane. It's yeah. 200 miles inland and in the mountains. That's. I would say the same thing. Yeah. Like, I don't... Tornado? It doesn't make no sense. How Tornadoes, I, maybe, but not no hurricanes. I, I just explained to you how hurricanes form over the... Lakes. Finger Lakes? Yeah. All right. I asked to speak to the owner. Some guy comes out from behind the office in his underwear and in a tank top. Definitely the owner. He was eating a taco or something and could not or would not speak to me. Instead, he was yelling at the child working in the office in another language. What language? So, child labor? Must be his child. And that's the only time that's allowed. I guess. I spoke to him and he started throwing things from the counter. I said, calm down. You don't tell an angry person to calm down. No, it never calm. works. It, it, that actually makes it worse. Yes. I guess. Oh, they figured it out. I should not have said that. Yeah. He picked up the computer and threw it to the lobby. He then slapped the child, screaming in another language and spitting his food all over the place. He went over to the TV in the lobby and pulled it from the wall and smashed it on the floor. Flipped the couch over and then picked up a coffee table and smashed it. He then went into the breakfast area, turned over a refrigerator, threw a microwave on the floor and a waffle iron and a juice machine. That's losing it. That is definitely losing it. If he owns a hotel, he's got to fix all that. What is he going to tell the people at the Continental Breakfast in the morning? That there's no juice. Yeah. <laughs> or refrigerator. <laughs> and the waffle is gone. The child then looked at me and said she could not find my reservation and to ignore her dad, he acts like this all the time. Oh, so he repairs the <laughs> lobby course. all the time. I replied, I already have a room, just wanted some toilet paper. She said with a computer smash, there was nothing she could do. Can't get that toilet paper off Amazon if you oh, can't order it. You got to be able to you gotta have see that screen every time. I took pictures and a quick video of the owner who by then had started taking pictures off the wall and smashing them on the floor. Well, it already broke everything else. I sent these to the customer service agent, customer service agent at Priceline. They refunded my money. I then called my husband and told him to meet me at the car with our luggage. I then called nine one one and told them they should also bring someone from child services. Then I left. 
<laughs> you know, that sounds like she was not a Karen. It sounds like appropriate behavior with some concern for the child that he was smacking. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the first one was definitely Kristen Karen. There was some violence there. I think it's driving me crazy today. But, you know, just National Domestic Violence Hotline is 800-799-SAFE or 7233. And this child should not have to take it from her father. And it sounds like if it wasn't his child, there's some child labor action going on there. That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah, doesn't sound right to me. No, I mean, there's definitely some nefarious stuff going on there. That That's a pretty be. wordy word mm. there, nefarious. You like that? That's my word of the day. It's like Rastafarians. Rastafarious. Rastafarious. That's yeah. a, that's the new Jamaican Fast and Furious. Rastafarious? Rastafarious. Very furious. <laughs> so it sounds like their new Rastaf energy drink. Rastafarious 5. Infused with weed. Yeah. Rastafurious. Right. Hey, hold it. It's a rowdy. Should we copyright that? Is it rowdy and three cheese combo? Rastafarious? Well, we could go to a legal state and copyright the name and get someone else to produce it for us. They take on all the financial risk. An energy Rast weed. Rastafarious. An energy weed drink. Rastafurious. Get your energy and your... Furious. <laughs> get your furious on. Get furious with Rastafurious. Fitting all free. All right, so we are racing in Watkins Glen this weekend. The race is at 3 o'clock on USA and MRN. It is a 2.45-mile so road course. Hey, you know, let's make sure it rains in the afternoon and have a 3 o'clock start. Yes. That's can a, we do that? Well, we can race in rain tires. We have sprinkle tires. Why is it the NFL can start at 12.30 on a Sunday, but NASCAR can't? Why don't we have lightning tires? We should. Well, isn't rubber That's by nature non-conducive for electricity? Why don't, yes, so. You're isolated. And the cameraman have tennis shoes on. Yeah. That's rubber soles. They're okay, guys. Let's race. There's a lot of plastic on those cameras. I, I literally hate rain delays, but I hate lightning delays more. Why it, don't they get a copper wire, put it in the rubber shoe, and put it to the ground with a nail, and then they'd be grounded? I mean, that's, that's a pot of saying when you say, oh, he's well grounded. Yeah, it is. Is that what Ben Franklin told his idiot son as he was holding the kite? Probably. You're well grounded. You're well grounded, son. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to do the top 10 from the last race here and their three race average finish. Kyle Larson won it here last year. His I average saw him. finish is 3.3. .3. Pretty good job. AJ Allmendinger has only raced here once in the last three races. He finished second. Joey Logano finished third, 16.0 average finish. Chase Elliott. 2.3, Daniel Suarez in fifth with a 17.7 .7 average finish. Michael McDowell, sixth with a 14.3 average finish. Tyler Reddick, 8.5. Christopher Bell, eighth with a 7.5 average finish. Chris Buscher, ninth with 13.0 average finish. And Eric Jones has a 13.7 average finish and finished tenth. But I would not pick Eric Jones because legacy sucks right now well they're kind of in that uh lame duck period where they don't have a manufacturer correct they just happen to be driving the sheevies it almost seems like stuart haas racing is also in that lame duck period it does because every other four teams winning but stuart haas yep so maybe just maybe they're changing manufacturers they're going to chevy and nobody knows juniors that. buying in it, it could Crazier things have happened, my friend. Well, you know, Mr. Haas could keep a third interest, just sell a third interest to... Uh... True that. All right. The... I lost last week again. I'm on like a roll. I don't think I've won in like two months. Well, you didn't lose bad this time. You were only off by four points. I had Truex, Cendric, and SVG for a total of 31 points. Jamie had Soras, Brody, and Elliot. For all a total yours of were 27 points. All yours were top 15. I know. They really, I mean, it. neither one of us had bad picks. Brody killed you. If you honestly wouldn't have picked Brody, you would have been good to go. Yeah, guess who was going to pick instead of Brody, but I decided Brody would step it up so we wouldn't look like a douche. Like, who are we going to pick? By coming in. I thought he was, I was going to go with the winner. Oh, Dow. really? But I was like, you know what? SVG. He's going to put a little pressure on Brody not to wuss out. But I, I thought I had McDowell for some reason, but I didn't. I had Cendric, which I don't know why I thought he was going to We discussed. Something. We were talking about, are you going to pick McDowell? Well, and I said, yeah, I think I'd go with Brody if you're going SVG. 
So we can I, always go to the videotape or the recording. True that. Yeah. Well, I, as with the way we do our fantasy points, the lower number wins. Jamie had 27, I had 31, so I picked first again this week. Overall, I have a total of 1,065, and Jamie has a total of 970 overall points. So who you gonna pick, Brad? I'm gonna go with Chase Elliott. Oh man, I was gonna go with him again if you didn't pick him. I'm going to go with. Oh man. This metal group's hard. I'm going to go with Busher. Busher. Really? Yeah. Okay. That's a surprise. And He's my, won two. Yeah, I mean, but... This ain't an oval. Uh, it, Busher Gibbs won. I'm not going with Blaney or Cindric because they're on the losing team. So, in my, my, from 21st to 30th pick, I'm going to go with... Man, I don't want to get AJ again. AJ ain't got it in cup, dude. I'm just saying. No, I don't. Or their cars ain't functioning. One or the other. Yeah, they're I on go. that. They're on that motorcycle club Chevy. I go with um, Bush, Kyle Bush. Well, he kind of shocked me. Did he drop a cylinder? He dropped something. Something, something went happened. bad. He had some issues. All right, who you got? All right. All right. Hmm. Messed you up. I'm going with Kyle. Larson. One last time. All right. In the mid pack. No, and Denny. He wanted some uh, Samoma, didn't he? Doesn't matter. I'm going to pick him anyway. <laughs> and I can't say the name. Sane? Samoma. Sanawawa? Samoma. Some more. Well, it's getting tight. Kevin's got to perform, dude. Yeah, but he hasn't. Yeah, and he broken ribs. sucked at a road course lately. That Jensen Button there. Ugh. Ty Dillon's still available if you want to use him. Yeah, he's always awesome. <laughs> I'm going to say Joey's going to pop out of his shell. Like a Ninja Turtle. Logo no. So I got a Chevy, a Toyota, and a Ford. I got two Chevys and a Ford. All right, that's all I got this week. What about you, Jamie? You got uh, happy anniversary. You going to take her something better than Burger King? Yeah, I was thinking about Domino's. Where Where did you, first time you took her out to eat, where did you take your wife? Oh, Carabas. Nice. Our first date was. You went to impress, huh? So we were actually just, we were pretty much best friends all through high school. It was like 10th grade during the middle of biology class. I stood up and told the whole class I was going to marry her one day. I didn't necessarily know at that point, but... You were prophetic, dude. It came, it came true, right? Speak it and it shall come true. Wow. That was in 10th grade. Uh, 11th grade, we went on our first date. It was on um, Valentine's Day. Went to the movies and went to Carabas. What dinner. movie was it? I think it was Valentine was the name of the movie. Oh, the horror flick, Valentine's Day? Yeah, but see, we didn't... We didn't, didn't watch it much. We didn't. We weren't trying to have boyfriend and girlfriends and deal with all the Valentine's BS. So as friends, we just went out. That was kind of our first date. Was really just as friends. And then senior year, we started dating, and oh. got married a few years after. Been together. Been together like twenty two years or something like that. Popped some kids. Married nineteen years. Three kids. Bought a house, car. Had a few dogs. Kind of like an American dream there. American dream. America. 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 But going to um, Enzo Steakhouse at Trillith Studios tonight. I don't even know where that is. You know where Trillith Studios is? Trillith. Oh, yeah. It's new. They built it like before COVID. The thing off again. I'll, my thank you's falling off. I'm going to need help from a physician. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all I got for today. Um, thanks to everyone who listens, watches, shares the show on social media. Thanks again, Russ. We greatly appreciate you listening. Thanks, Russ. Make sure you follow us on Twitter. We're at Car Backwards. Go to our YouTube channel. You're obviously, if you're watching this, you're already there. So make sure you like this video and subscribe. Check out our other videos if you haven't watched them yet. Check us out on Spotify. And make sure you to rate us there. Subscribe to the show on Apple Podcast and leave us a review like Brandon did. Thanks again, Brandon. We appreciate it. 
send us a DM or you can email us at racecarbackwardspod at gmail.com. Again, our email address is racecarbackwardspod at gmail.com. Send us an email, ask us a question, tell us what you think. We don't care. Whatever you send us, we'll read it. And make sure to check out our merch store. It's racecarbackwards.com or racecarbackwards.threadless.com. And we are now on Facebook, so go to the Facebook page and follow along. Do you follow or are you friends? Have you figured that out? You'll never figure it out. Well, I, I, I hate try. Facebook. I know. I know. I, you're, I, you're struggling I, with sliding into those DMs this week. I, I, I did not even slide into a DM. <laughs> I read them. Have you ever slid into a DM? I don't even know what that is. Okay. Well, don't do it. Okay. All right, that's all well, we got, guys. The, well, how can you slide into a DM? Isn't that directly to you? Just Google it. All right, whatever. Look it up online. You know, I asked I asked some friends to it's friend. Like having confidence I don't know what online. you do on Facebook. Do you, you ask them to be request. your friend? Yeah, you have a friend request. And now I'm nervous. You know why? Because they haven't replied. No, one didn't reply, and they called me and said, "Is this, is that really is that, you? Is this really you?" The last Jamie yeah. Farrow I was friends with on Facebook was sending me nudie pictures. Is this really you? I said, yeah, that was my request. Don't worry about it. Whatever. <laughs> That's funny. So did they friend? They accepted your request? I don't know how to tell if they have. All right, guys. We greatly appreciate everybody who listens. Catch you next week. Y'all have a great week. Bye, everybody. See ya. You think Elon will buy Facebook next? I hope so. You just listened to Race Car spelled backwards. For that, we thank you.